This is the Bar Stewards Enquiry. You are talking absolute rubbish. Absolute rubbish. In, in what way? You are an underachiever in life. You were, I saved your bacon one time. You were gone. You had to that well. I couldn't save you. I, I said, oh, no, but you said the right thing. But well, that's why you don't know anything about racing, John. I, I didn't say I do. Right? I'm saying that... What, what have you contributed to racing? You are one of these take-out merchants. Take out all you can. And a very warm welcome to the Bastards Inquiry Guineas Edition. This is where uh, the very best of us go through the fine action we've got at HQ this weekend. The 2,000 Guineas, of course, on Saturday and the 1,000 Guineas taking place on Sunday. Uh, so on this wonderful show, as always, the show that's not totally shit, uh, joining me tonight is just two guests, but less is more. We can, can go through more stuff. It's John Lang and Nick Davis. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening, please. Good evening, Al. Yeah, uh, I've got a feeling that Davis is going to sprout into form soon because he's had some fabulous winners on Patreon of late, tipping up two last week at lovely prices. Isla Kaya eight and something else, I think, at which eight Sarum- one. That's Sarum- the one. Yeah, eight, yeah. Sar- Sarumi at eights as well. And so I've got a feeling that Davis will come good on one of these Saturday shows because he's he's absolutely brimming with confidence. I think that this weekend, and same with John, who's. Clearing the naps table, blasting, blasting, finger blasting at the top on plus 48 points for the flat season so far. So, without further ado, let's get to it on our best bets round. This is where we go one, two, and three points for our better selections this weekend. It can be Saturday or Sunday. So, Nick Davies, coming to you for your one pointer. Right, you remember the Shawshank Redemption. You remember the bit when he comes out of the, the, of the tunnel, the pouring rain, he holds his hands <laughs> up in the air. Do you remember yeah. that? Yeah, full yeah. of shit. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that, that's what Juan Lapang felt like last July when he joined <laughs> Appleby. <laughs> yes. Uh, and then six furlongs from then on, uh, on big fields seemed to really suit. He's had the same prep as he had just when he left uh, Ed's. Last time there was seven furlongs, they put the head and the head of the pieces on the, I think about fourth, uh, fourth or fifth at Newmarket. Nice little pipe man. They've come off again, and he's back to six furlongs. I mean, with uh, with the uh, last and claiming three on, he's about the same mark as uh, the Air Gold Cup. So I think he'll give you a very good run for your money here. In yeah. the fifty. He's in the 250 at Newmarket. That's a six furlong Howden Heritage Handicap. And uh, Tan Mawi's current favourite there. But Nick makes a very valid case for the dropping back in trip. Juan Lepa, uh, citing Shawshank Redemption. Uh, <laughs> good, 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 good analogy. 16 to 1. Uh, we bet through it with Denise. But we said we'd do the fair price policy. And I'm knocking you down at 14s, Nick. Because it's yeah. got to be with two books, so 14s each way a pleasure. But you, but are you on? Are you on the nose? Yeah, on the nose. Yeah, on the nose. One point. Think, think if you're not going to be back, and I'm my patron, patron <laughs> uh, sits in the nap table. <laughs> <coughs> Have we got you right on minus nine? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've only yeah, been yeah. One, two shows. Yeah. Yeah, you're number one, it. So one lip hand kicks us off nicely there. Sixteen to one if you're fortunate with Denise. Fourteen to one we'll have for results. Uh, John Lane, your one pointer. Uh, I'm on here because my coronation in rates got lost in the post. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, I, I was thinking I was going to have to ring Camilla and tell her I didn't want any foie gras on ethical grounds. <laughs> it looks like I don't have to go now. You, anyway. can, tu- you, you can tune in on telly, John. Yeah. Well, it's highly unlikely. <laughs> uh, anyway, the sooner we get to it, the sooner we get through it. Eh? Yeah. It's a classic weekend, so obviously I'm off to you, Toxita. What? <laughs> Incredible. Five well five, you, Toxita. Es perfecto. This is actually one of my five to follow over the sticks. I mean, it's second run since we released the five to follow over the sticks. <laughs> Enjoyed a lovely float up round there last time, I thought, after the thick end of two years off the track. Been given ample time to get over that. It turns out that they are off what is another reduced mark, unbelievably. And given that he was showing promise and progression when rated 134 before he's let off, I think this is a really interesting mark, despite things obviously not having gone to script, shall we say. 
I thought it would have been chasing, man. I wouldn't think it is a fairly only Norris chaser. But anyway, we are where we are. Twenty of these have either been fighting a losing battle with the handicapper or been off for a while. And I think his chance here is obvious. If he can't convert this, he's of no further interest to me. <laughs> One point win. So this is it. Last chance saloon has John amazingly <clears throat> on Guinea's Day and Thirst Cunt Cup Day goes over the sticks on it's perfecto 10 to 1 generally available for John for his one point win uh, that's all over the place uh, has been a bit of money for that uh, interesting selection John uh, okay I'll kick us off with a one point win bet and this goes at Hamilton on Sunday and it goes in the uh, one of their better races there the 205 race it's the uh, Green Oak Hill handicap over a mile and five I'm quite shocked at the price of this one actually Wiki Wiki Wheels. Um, yes, I managed to get this beat off about a thirty pound lower mark when it got a bad ride over over um, at this track. But since it's sort of took off, uh, it, all its wins have been coming at Hamilton, um, it's the, and except one win in Saudi Arabia, and it's had quite a good winter because it's obviously wintered in Maidan. Um, it's ran some good races in, in very very good company behind Siskani. It's some really good form and. You can strike the last run at Musselburgh because it couldn't get in the race. It was held up. It was wide. It was. It just had no kind of trip. And it, you could just strike the run from the form book. It wasn't its form. So that's why we're getting such big odds. And 11 to 1 uh, with William Hill and Betfair is simply just wrong. This is a wrong price because he's back to his his favourite hunting ground. And he's sure that his mark really isn't beyond him. You, you look at his runs in Dubai. Could any of these run as good as that in Dubai? I don't think so. So wiki wiki wheels should be a lot shorter. The point went 11 to 1 to kick us off. John Ling, round two. That was a bit of a cheeky bet, wasn't it? With the old toxic when there's classic <laughs> all over. So... Obviously, we're getting back on track here now, and uh, we've got Leopardstown on Sunday. Side <laughs> <coughs> uh, past one race, Torrey Vega, homebred by the Leveries. This one very much caught the eye last September in a fair maiden at the Curra. Lovely Scopey son of Lope de Vega, who moves a fair bit more fluidly than some of the size offspring. Wasn't asked a serious question in the race, but never struggling for pace at any point. Ran right through the line. You know I love to say him nearly go through the bars at the curry. This one did something <laughs> uh, fairly similar to that. I think there's plenty more to come from this one this year. And I hope I'm going to keep on side until he tells me otherwise. Two points win. Two points win. Tori Vega for Sheila Rav- Lavery and Robbie Colgan. Just just one thing, John. Mm. I don't, what sort of price would you be happy at? I've been expecting about twelve to one. I think this one. Yeah, so so like basically an each way price, you know, so that you know that, that kind of sort of twelves, ten. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, that's a guide for listeners there. What John wants. Um, so that. I think that's what he wants. Yeah, I'm okay. just looking at the race now. Yeah, I think you're probably right. There's an horse rated hundred and two in there. Yeah, uh, I don't think the you know the bookmakers on to compare this should. Have the same incredible insight that I have when I'm there, Shredded. So. <laughs> yeah. No. So, yeah, no, no, good stuff. Okay, I like it. So, so far we're tipping some quite nice prices. I, I'm going to ruin it now and <laughs> go go with something shorter and boring. And it's 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 more topical. It's in the it's in the one thousand guineas, and I'm two points win here on the favourite of Dirty Dermots to hire um, at five to two. I think I think she will win the Guineas. I'm that confident. I just don't think there's anything to get near her. Meditate, second favourite. She absolutely pummeled that in the Moy Glare. What I did like as well, that Dermot Weld earlier said in the spring, said that she was thrashing some of his best three-year-olds. And then he's come on Nick Luck's pod and, told it, and played it right down and said, Ooh. and I like that because basically there's no way to hire her will be turning up at Newmarket if... If she wasn't absolutely a one, because they just they'd just go to Ireland, um, and and that was the sort of everyone thought that would have been the plan that, that J- Jack, who, who comments on the show, he 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 thought she wouldn't run, and the sectional time she showed at Galway was was ridiculously fast. She pulled five clear of a listed class horse, um, so you knew then that she was Group One to do that on debut. That's why I was heavy on her in the Moy Glare. 
And if you watch the video, watch Tahira through the line after the line. John, you you said you like a one that blasts, you know. Get get him through the fucking bars down the bottom, right? Yeah, couldn't pull her up. So I'm not having any of this. Will she stay baloney? She'll stay all day. Crunch, that was seven, wasn't it? Yeah. So momentum will get her on. <laughs> oh, it, oh yeah. It's uh, this is a very, very, very good filly, and <clears> I, I think I don't think she'll just win. I think she'll be very impressive in victory as well, despite it being a big field. So Tyra at two points win in the thousand guineas at five to two. Nick Davis. This will be the shortest price horse I've probably ever tipped because I've changed my <laughs> mind again. Three forty-five Goodwood Mark of Gold. Yes. Um, this horse improved through the winter for a test of stammer. It was over two miles. It was running to about 119, 120. Up in trip, it's shown a lot of improvement. Improved to about another 15 pounds from there. It's handicapped now on its 12 furlong form when it was with Richard Hannon. And if it's in the same sort of improvement, you'll get up to two miles then this will be about as good a contest as Godzilla versus Bambi. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, That's all I've got to say on the matter. I can't see it really getting beaten, but who knows? I'm going to say, if you're tipping one up at five to two, uh, it's it's quite a rare occurrence. I don't think I've ever, since I've known you, I don't think you've ever tipped me one up as short as five to two. Mortgage job this, isn't it? It is. It's a tip in itself. Nick often said to me in the past that he's uncomfortable below five to one. He often gets the sweats um, if he's having to bet anything below fives. And and uh, the fact he's uh, balls deep on this at five to two. I, I'm, it's, I, I, it's Nick sweating now is the time to bet. <laughs> it really is, yeah. It really is. I love it, Nick. Um, and, and you've been, obviously, for Patreon members, you've been sweet on this. You did a column on it. it it'd, be, it'd be them fuckers that's, that'll, they'll knock it in overnight, <laughs> won't it? Uh, <laughs> they like that. I like it. So that's to finish the two point round off. I'll kick us off with a max bet to them, the three pointers. It, sadly, it's a split state wanker bet, yeah. which, which I know it takes glossies, but it's boring, isn't it? But I just can't get past either. 120 Goodwood. I'm starting off with two points win Quantum Impact of uh, Rafe Ralphs. Four to one available. I, I got, I was salivating when initially it was put in at, at 17 to two. I'm thinking, Christ, um, that is some bet because this should be clear five. The the two in front of it in the market, Harry Magnus and Havana Blue, both had good trips at Newmarket. They got plenty of cover into the headwind. Remember at the Craven meeting, there was only one winner out of the three days that made all because of the severe he- uh, headwind. And these two both got nice trips. So, uh, and they're drawn in eight and nine, which is no good for seven furlongs. So. Uh, Quantum Impact's the first one in stall one. Likeable attitude last back end at Newbury, and it will probably be soft at Goodwood tomorrow with the rain forecast. They've got quite a lot of rain forecasts, actually six to seven mils during the day. Mm. Um, so it's, it could be uh, Seamus sloppy uh, at Goodwood tomorrow, which will suit Quantum Impact, no problem. So that's the two points. And the one point goes on physique of Paul Coles. But, uh, he's booked Billy Loft name taking the three off instead of the idiot that usually rides it, claiming seven. This 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 horse I noted when it beat one of the Sam Peoples last last autumn, uh, Majestic Pride I think, and and I, I thought it was a real real quality horse. Then it pulled the kid's arms off in a listed race last time at Chelmsford, so you could just stripe that. It's installed too, and what they'll do is here with Billy on. I think they'll just pop out and try and make all. I think that's the angle. Lead them a merry dance down there on the inside. So I think that's a great bet to bounce back to form. I'll not be greedy. You can get eights with an E, sevens with ills, but I'll take the 13 to two for my point uh, to cover the uh, the bet on uh, quantum impact. So, yeah, very confident on that race, folks. Um, I think I think we'll draw. Um, okay, Nick Davis. Right, the best handicap of the day, probably, the... Uh... 325 new market tomorrow. Fascinating. Probably the best handicap that's been run this year. So I'll go through them. Uh, Jimmy Hendrix, interesting that uh, one thing with him, he's drawn in the middle, the stores are in the middle, and his last three wins, he's been ridden wide of all the runners. It's going to be a bit more difficult tomorrow. Yeah. Um, King of uh, King of Conquest, very hard to sum up. One in Bahrain, the Wolverhampton candy cap isn't, but you've got to respect the stable. Uh, Empire is going up in class. Cadillac's got a lot of weight. Saga's a shit out in 
<laughs> I think I think Charlie's doing something else or something. I, mean, I think it, I think it's going to be off at uh, Royal Ascot. Dutch decoy is interesting on on good to firm, but I think he meet to come down in class. I it's nine furlongs new market is a very very sort of specialist distance. So what I want to do, I want a combination forecast. Three who will love it here. Turntable, dual identity, majestic. <coughs> the last two all out. Well, dual identity was on the wrong side in the Cambridgeshire when majestic won. It is, it is a new market. It's a, it's a funny track, and everyone acts on it. So I've decided to go for the big price forecast and get the first and second. Yeah, be a nice payout that if you, if you manage to land that. So that's majestic turntable and dual identity for Nick in a pound. Uh, well, it, it'll be a. Uh, 50 pence combination forecast in terms of staking mm, up. Yeah. Yeah. I know, I'm giving him a chance, weren't I? It's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> on, sh- on show a quiz. I know, I know. No, good stuff. Um, that'll be a nice payout, that Nick. I like it. John? After today's first two teaser bets away, away from the main action there, we're now with Hamilton on Sunday. <laughs> 350 race. Arkin Star. Now, this one was noted on this year's debut mainly for the absolutely stinking rotten ride given by Adele's Ubi, who sat there pausing while allowing the horse to get checked and outpaced simultaneously. And please about two things in particular here. Firstly, that they've not gone up to 10 furlongs, as I felt sure that would have been the feedback from the jockey rather than blame himself for cocking up. And secondly, that Callum Hispaniol replaces the hapless Mulrennan. I like the way Callum rides, almost always giving himself a chance to kick from the toe pole. And a positive ride is all I want to say on this chap. Um, I see very little in the opposition to get excited about, and I might play a straight win. So three points on the schnozzle. What price, again, roughly, are you expecting or happy with? I think this should be about five. Three points win. John's hoping for around fives uh, when the betting comes out. So that finishes the round off. Some nice choices there. We've actually managed a guinea selection between us, but we've tipped the five. <laughs> <laughs> but for you Sticks fans, you see, we feel sorry for you. So John's he's living on past glories with his winter naps table win, so he's... He's uh, sticking with the jumps. And, and, and you Toxic a national winner, didn't I? So I, I have to have a little pork at you Toxic. Yeah, it's your favourite track now. After it's, my, major... it's my spiritual home and jumping. Yeah. <laughs> Don't they all get, they all get drunk and start fights then? Yeah, yeah. Tree trunk starts winding them all up as well, you know, like we have to time in bets and then they, then they start fighting, don't they, John? We, we used to call there back in the day when we'd done the week at Cheltenham. Most of us should have been in hospital by the time we got to uh, the old taxi to run the Saturday. We didn't go it many years, about four years on the spin we went there uh, to Cheltenham. And uh, it, it's, it's, it's a rugged end to the week if you've been there since three days down at Gloucester. <laughs> it's all like remaining bits of Charlie left, isn't it? From... Yeah, yeah. So... <laughs> Saw the dregs out of your coat pocket that fell out of the bag. <laughs> it's the one you forgot about on a night. I, oh, oh, I've got a bit left. <laughs> oh, dear. You like that with the money as well. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so I've got 20. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> straight, straight into trap one. Put in, put in, putting them down. Anyway, that's just a different show. 215 Newmarket tomorrow is where we kick off the, the listed Phillies race. Thoughts here, chaps. I mean, John, when he sees a Phillies race, it's usually pate time. Well, it is. I mean, they're not very good, are they? You know, <laughs> I mean, you, you know, half of them are cunts, let's be fair. <laughs> you know, I mean, that heredia of Hannon's, for example, you know, I mean, what was that going to do last year when, when she won her first two? Yeah. She, she, she was going to rule the world, wasn't she? Yes. Here we are now, rated 102. It's not for me, this kind of shit. Sorry. No, I, uh, Nick, have you any thoughts on this? Never heard of any of them. <laughs> right, I, I, I could actually stop this show from nosediving into oblivion <laughs> by, <laughs> by, by, by just mentioning uh, that three-year-olds have won six at last ten renewals, which is quite interesting. Uh, they've got quite a good record in the race in terms of runners beaten. Um, and I just thought that the Bowie pair, Padika and Queen Ollie, are the only two three-year-olds in the race. 
Um, Bowie sticks the tongue tie on Queen Ollie, and Queen Ollie ran well to Matilda Picot last back end in similar company. And this is he's only had one start. Uh, she's only had one start for uh, Bowie and got no cover into the headwind at Newmarket. So the fact that Queen Ollie went off a well back 17 to 2 chance for a Nell Gwyn, um, now she's 11s to win a, probably a lesser race. I thought she was interesting. And obviously, Padaiko William Buick's chose to ride. Uh, she's been in good form. Second at Bath recently. She won a listed race at Sean T as well. So I thought I would I would pair up the two three year olds in that in a little small Dutch um, mm. to keep. To kick off the TV card, Kevin Stutter. Stutter, yeah. I mean, you know, I'd make, he'll be under a lot of Tom, Tom, Tom Kelly, Kevin. Tom and Kelly. <laughs> <Get yourself. laughs> you got to ride a winner on the telly, Kevin. Your profile will be no good. You'll be back up at Hamilton soon. <laughs> Brilliant. Right, we've gone to 250. Uh, one left hand for Nick and, he, uh, and a good case made. Dropping back from seven to six, it's the right trip, I agree. Thought a very competitive affair. Tam Maui. I think we'll want the ground softer. So it depends what happens with the rain at Newmarket tonight and tomorrow. That's going to be a problem for us tipping because obviously we might be tipping fast grounders and it ends up soft. We just don't know. But I thought it was overall it was a tough race. And I, I probably agree with Nick, actually, because how this lad travels in a strongly run race, it's going to suit. It's, it's, going, to, it's going to have a lot running in his favour. So I'm, I was probably with Nick's selection. John? Some Lawrence is going to do something this year. Oh, uh, I yeah, think. No, no. I've, I've, I've fell for that a couple of times. Yeah, well, I think when the net is off, the, the, there's, there's reasons to be cheerful now about this house. <laughs> it didn't look reasons to be cheerful last time, did it? <laughs> no, I, 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 I don't think that it gets some, get oh, get some awful rads at your market, mate. Let's be fair, doesn't it? I mean, they drop it out in the... Would you get the, a pretty strong six? I think it will if the round it might have been round it on a fan. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's one to keep, and I, I, I can't back it to much because it didn't show me enough on Demio after the gelding. But I, I want to have a look at this tomorrow and, and maybe try and assess where we are with the earth. And I do think it's got a race of this nature in it. Possibly not the walking them, but. <laughs> So, so something of that ilk, maybe even Stewart's cup over a sharp of six. We'll see. But I, I want to have a look at it tomorrow and see what's what. Mm. He's he's a bit of a bast. I mean, that, that's that's, oh, yeah, yeah. He, that's his that's his problem. But a lot of talent. Probably there. left him on so long. To got the bricks out to uh, middle of a three year old career. Uh, the way to solving the situation a bit quicker, but. As I say, I don't think all is quite lost yet. It's close to being. So, Juan Le Pain and a bit of St. Lawrence. John's just going to have a look at that tomorrow uh, to see what he's, what he's going to do for, for there and the rest of the season. 325 is the Suffolk handicap. Jimi Hendrix, uh, of obviously what Nick's, Nick's gone through the race, uh, gave, us a, gave us an idea what he likes. Uh, John, any thoughts on this? This is a great contest, isn't it? Um, yeah, it's tough. And... and- I'm definitely throwing my next dual identity. I, th- I think that's got a rattling chance. I could not see that out the first far. And I, I do think that Gobby Rogers tushes there is worth another chance. I, I tipped it up at the Craven meeting. Yes, you did. Uh, Johnny Pat here wrote it. Um, and he started one side, switched to the other side, and ended up in between the two sides. So he did cover a bit of extra ground. I think... On reflection, the horse might not quite have been cherry ripe after being short work for the Lincoln. I think there's probably still a little bit more to come. Spencer on, pat here off, could be the angle. Mm, good yeah. price. Yeah, you'd want a good pace, wouldn't you? Yeah, uh, yeah, well, we know what's going to happen, don't we? That's one yeah. I'm just afraid Dawn, uh, Dawn of Liberation will set out in front and put the anchors on. Well, yeah, that yeah, that is a... That... They all try to do it, don't they, now? That's the problem. Don't worry about the race. Yeah. They're all they're all saving the smacks, John. Yeah, that, that's it. You know, I mean, you'd be a lot more confident if this was a man at Ascot, wouldn't you, than a man one here. Yeah, definitely. Okay, move on. I've not really a, uh, much opinion on that, so I'll not bore anyone. Four o'clock Newmarket, the Palace House, another very competitive sprint and uh, and a very very tough race to play. I felt, chaps. Horrific, isn't it? Yeah. 
I this is... I, if, it, if, if it's not too, if it's not too uh, wet, I thought get ahead who got squeezed out at Bath and came and came, had to come really, really wide and sports wide. I thought a three-year-old season was a little bit up and down, but don't forget, only get was it she thrashed Silky Wilkie on better ground than an undulating course at Goodwood. And I felt I might have a little play if it's not wet. Or about 20s, uh, get ahead. Mm. Yeah, it definitely took a while last season for get ahead to, to, to get into top gear. So the fact that, that she's uh, she's run quite well uh, on reappearance might be a very good sign for a season ahead, Nick. Um, mm. So, it, yeah, it's, it might, might be a fair shout at a price that. Um, like you say, beat Amarin Silky Wilkie before. What are we thinking to horses like like for, for Chipstead? I mean, I mean, it's like that's, surely this is a this this is a extremely good horse. Are we saying <clears> that it's going to need softer ground over this this trip probably to to, to show its best? Yeah, probably best at six, isn't it? Really, um, I, I wouldn't fancy it for this. It, this is a strange shout to me. But it's the reason I've always been interested in Chipstead because uh, obviously you, you know the family, don't you? It's a brother to Oxted, which obviously yeah. won the July Cup. So I've all, I have always had my eye on this as it, as an horse that I just think will probably end up right at the right at the top. I, you know, late developer carries an improving year on year. But it's a Parkland horse, isn't it? And I mean, Parkland's yeah. right at my- Right at the minimum of each trip, I think. Do you think it's interesting that they've left it as a horse? They've not they've not gelded this. It's it's five now. It's as if like they're just wondering. If, well, if, if the tempers are right, and it's a sprint away, wouldn't you? Because it can keep conditioning up, can't it? Yeah, yeah, that's true. You, you know, you'll see, you, you can. Now, I would only gel the sprinter if it was <laughs> probably be a bit of a handful. Yeah. You know, otherwise, lame man, you know, I mean, get as big as a bull, can't yeah. Well, yeah. Well, that's it. That, he's an also awesome interest me anyway, and I'm pretty certain he'll be better than a handicapper. Um, he'll be, he'll be, um, you know, I know this is not not a handicap; it's a good race. But yeah, year, I'd say, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think you could see this horse progressing into sort of better than this later later down the line. So anyway, that will marsh out at a big price, but I'd have to have a look at him to see how straight they've got him first time. They might just want to spin with him. Four forty, then the big race of the day. This is this is the one where we can dissect uh, in more detail. We'll go through the runners' thoughts on August Day Rodan. Um, uh, my feeling is that there has to be something around Little Big Bear that's been extremely disappointing in the spring. Yeah. Because if things had gone to plan over the winter and in the early part of the season, I don't see how any jockey could pick this over the other one. No, I, I agree, John. Because some... the other fucking broke the clock. Yeah. And as he has potential as a matter, you'd say that Little Big Bear would have the potential to be one of the, one of the best Whereas this, you're full of doubts whether it's going to be far enough for him. Uh, when the ground might be so fast, I know there's rain forecast and all the rest of it, but to me, this is a horse that's become first choice by nature of it losing the position of second choice by default. So there's definitely something going wrong with Little Big Bear for me. Well, the fact that they missed the Dewar, like, like they intended the Dewar after, after Curra, they said it had had a slight setback. And then they decided not to bother with the Dewhurst, which is yeah. fair enough. It's, it's had enough starts. But like you said, John, because the market's reacted in the way it has this spring, which means there's something not quite right. The, the, the only thing I'm surprised about is that they're actually running it. Mm. I thought it might have been, you know, Rip Van Winkle job. You got two out of tax this spring, you know, we're at the leg transplant. <laughs> And uh, he, he's not quite there yet, so we, we're going to miss. We're going to come back in the Irish Guineas. They have, they, they have nibbled it, haven't they? It was 11 to 2 earlier. It's short as sport of one with Sky Bet 7 to 2 bet fair. Um, unless, John, the lads are just. just <laughs> <laughs> have just decided to. to yeah, yeah, to stick their hand on this. <laughs> just fuck everybody. <laughs> they love a bit of sport like that. Um, well, yeah. yeah. Yeah, one of our listeners, Rory, has been back in this since since last summer. All sorts of prices, so I want it to win for Rory, uh, if anything. Chaldine, that that to me is. I wonder if that's getting some temperament, John. 
Well, this is another one right in between the lines. I mean, what the fucking hell was going on two weeks ago? I mean, he, there was no reason whatsoever for that ass to be running at Newbury. No. And the horse seemed to agree because he got rid of the Charlie pretty quickly and completed it its own turn, didn't it? <laughs> well, did you notice, I, although it was imp- <coughs> imp- impressive uh, on its last start last last season, it missed the break there. And, and I just thought, that's odd, you know, like to, to like miss mm. the kick. And then, and then obviously then it does that at the stalls there. Yeah, with the I, I don't think it was that impressive that, two weeks ago when it was receiving eight and a half stone from Isaac Shelby. <laughs> um, you, you'd have to worry, wouldn't you? Because, I mean, that's not a prep you would choose for a Jewest winner, you know. Yeah. Trails in Yelbury for a green, I mean, absolute slop. Fuck it right up. And then here we are two weeks later. You, you would not write that if you were writing down the broken nightmares, would you? So... Yeah, it's no. how 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 good we do we think the Jewish form is. But well, I mean, look, it, it's it, that's it. It's Royal Scotsman was in second. Um, <laughs> it was in the US, wasn't it? Not really. Nostrum, I, I thought I thought was a bit keen uh, in in that race as well. Come too soon for come too soon for Nostrum that race. Yeah, he, he kind of it was unusual for Stout to do that because. Obviously, the I think, plan... I think they want to get some more experience into him, so they'll probably go straight to the Guineas, but it's backfired horribly, hasn't it? So. Yeah. Royal Scotsman would be interested, I thought, if the ground comes up soft. Um, that, that's the one I'd, I'd be... Glen Eagle's out of a pivotal mare. Mm. That, is, that screams soft ground. And I thought, if you do get the rain tomorrow, watch out, folks. Like you say, or tonight, or you, you know, it's bucketing down at HQ for whatever reason. Royal Scotsman, I think you'll see get get hammered in the betting um, for Bent Jim and Paul Colt. What what we th- what do we think to that? Well, I, I couldn't argue with you. Know, I mean, I think Royal Scotsman's form is probably as good as anything on offer, and the ground would so if if it tipped down. Yeah. Do you think? Do you think Fish, if it wins, do you think Fitzroy would show a bit of leg for Jim? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> <That's there>, really. <laughs> Probably not, probably not on the podium while receiving the show. <laughs> it wouldn't bother. It wouldn't have bothered Bob, Bob Ogden. Any of that? Well, Bob, Bob would have lifted his skirt up, wouldn't he? <laughs> but not to give a shit for that guy. Sakia of Roger Varian. <clears throat> that's not going to get the trip, is it? I don't think Roger Varian's getting the trip at the minute. <laughs> <laughs> He's not in great form, is he? You know, I mean, honest to God, he, he comes into some of these big races and you look at him, oh, that might have a chance. And he, he's invariably out of form when he's... <laughs> yeah. When, when D-Day comes, you know, he's, he's never top trainer at York or Ascot. Or, no, no, you never talk about varying, like like you said, being a top trainer at a, any any festival meeting. No, he never has a bag full, does he? You know? And, no. Uh, he's got two fucking staples now, hasn't he? <laughs> He should be having a back full, though, shouldn't he? Yeah. Saki won't stay, Nick, will it? Ooh, don't know. I mean, don't have my one to stay, but uh, no, I'm a bit underwhelmed. Silver Knot? Um, Silver Knot will stay, but it's more chance of being placed. But I can yeah. see it third, fourth, fifth. I yeah. think the seat best of that one, you need a bit of juice myself. I do. little Yeah, a bit of juice in the ground, yeah. I agree, John. I, I was even thinking optimum for that this season. Is ten furlongs and good, you know, good to soft, something like that, you know, like a nice bit Probably, of cut, yeah, nice bit of cut in the ground. There might, have been, there might have been better waiting for Dante and making that it's derby this year, that one. Yeah, it might even get like, further than ten actually. Oh, they, I mean, could, they could go at Dante after this, couldn't they? They could actually. Yeah. Holloway boy uh, Christoph Sumi on an interesting book in this because uh, yeah, this has been the sort of like the uh, they think the the chief singer of remember went to Royal Ascot one debut one. As a disappointment afterwards, it, it, it's been heavily back from about 25 to well, short was 14, 12 in some place, hasn't it? You're yeah, a lot of fresh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, he's really con- apart from the fact that he looked a bit of a fucking maniac. Yes. He, he was really consistent, wasn't he, last year? You know, yeah, he's consistent maniac. Consistent yeah, 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 but like he his level, didn't he? You know, and it, Race by race, he was regularly running between 106 and 108. How closer would he have been the favourite if he'd have kept a straight course, though? Probably not a closer, because he's probably just a cunt. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I, I, I really am underwhelmed by this year's 2000. And I, I think I, I, we could be having another year again where we see the Phillies better than the... Uh... Do you think you should have a rock and roll over, like where they're all watching each other and uh, how Charlie Gay sends his off to the front, his, his man the quarter arse, and yeah. everybody says, oh, fucking hell, I fell on out. I, I, do you know what? I, I, I actually think that this is prime for a boil over. Nick, Nick, we'll come on to yours now, noble style. Are you confident you'll get the trip? I'm not confident you'll get the trip. There's been a lot of rubbish written about a few of his places. They said he travelled well in the uh, gym crack. He was the last. The fact he quickened twice. If you watch the race back, Buick about a furlong and a half out started pumping. <laughs> Got him in the second, but Marshall was still clear. He gave him wallop around the backside, and then he took off, and he run through the line. I mean, I backed him at 16 to 1 anti-post, and he's now bigger. But, I mean, obviously, I want the round to be good at worst for him. And I'd like to be, you know, you could see if he stayed that he would win. That, that's in my mind. If he does stay properly, he'll win, but it's whether he stays. But I was hoping for a bit faster ground. Yeah, we'll see, see how that goes. That plays out tomorrow. Uh, the Mother Earth kit obviously didn't 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 stay. But we'll, we'll see. Could, on end, that. could end up with Earth kit laying around in slang. <laughs> but you could you, you cannot not with Jim Frank form. Everything that was round it, Cold Case, Galeron, uh, Royal Cracksman. They were they were beating fair 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 Marshman. All yeah. of them it, it, come it's, out. A, it's a funny place to be, Nick, isn't it? Because, I mean, you wrote my age, you know, I mean, we've seen some shit gym cracks over the years. Yeah. <laughs> actually, 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 looking at a gym crack and saying, well, that was all right. Well, Rodrigo, I think Rodrigo was, was he the last one to win over six? <laughs> and then, uh, as a two year old, and come and win the Guineas, Rodrigo de Toronto, wasn't he? Yeah, well, it's, it's, the last one. Yeah. 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 100% sure, but. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to, I've got me out there post bet and I'm not confident, confident. <coughs> but as I said, James Stoll did say he, he never works anything at home, but he never works well at all. Yeah. Right. What, what I'm going to go for at a price, it tracks my eye, this, a, a massive 28. Kevin, <laughs> my, my, my Kevin and Megan show tomorrow, uh, indestructible. Okay. Now, now. <laughs> I, I know you don't want this to win, John. But like, but like the second in the Acre to Chaldine, that's 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 good. You know, there was not a lot between them there. And secondly, it got be easier at Doncaster by Chaldine, uh, but that was on soft ground. Now back on good ground, it came out, and I thought it was very impressive when it won when it won the Craven because. Again, I've talked about the wind. It got no cover whatsoever. Um, and I thought it was an impressive performance. He quite a, a decent time to for the headwind. So I don't think this is a million at all. I, in a bad year, I'd I think, be looking... I think 28 ones really Spartan for a Craven winner, isn't it? It is. You don't get many... Unless, unless like, they're trained by Richard Annan, you don't get many Craven winners at 28. No. Um, <laughs> so, so I think... I think Carl I mean, Berg's, it's been to say yardstick as well. It did because on the preview show we we well I you and I think it was you and Jack or, or you and Quentin like the foxes. No, I like the foxes as a tape, but I didn't actually like them from your market. No, but, uh, <laughs> no, it'll be at his best elsewhere. No, so I, I just thought just just to chuck a, a dart for me at the Guineas, it'd be indestructible um, at a price, and I hope little big bear wins just for just for amusement. Yeah. Just, just I hope little big bear goes five seven or two five to two nine or four seven or four <laughs> and the lads the lads have had it right off. <laughs> See, Taylor doing the happy dance in the <laughs> in the winners enclosure. Absolutely right. We're going on to Sunday's cards, which is obviously HQ. Mm. And the four races there again, some cracking racing. Got us there. Sometimes we we crab the competitiveness of certain handicaps because of the. Uh, the uh, sale of horses to Hong Kong, yeah. Australia, and the low prize money, but it's not bad at all. Good prize money on Sunday for this handicap. One fifty hundred thousand added. First man is six to one favourite for the mile and six race. Any thoughts in this, gentlemen? It, yeah, I, I, 
It's a very unlikely Martin, wasn't it? It's hardly unexposed on the flat. I mean, it stands at a mile in back in, Bu- in, in Booking Buick for the ride. It's hardly his type, is it? Well, yeah, it's just, I mean, obviously, he's got very good form uh, recently on the all weather. But, I mean, it's managed to get beat off 94 recently over jumps. <laughs> it's very strange, isn't it? It is. I, I find it a strange runner. And a strange unless, one. unless it's a pointer for something else, you just come over. I don't, I, I don't know the love of the money, but I like the four-year-olds in there, seeking and uh, adjudicant. Yeah, I think they they will run very well. I think uh, they look the type of me at three that would would make up with a good four-year-old handicapper. For me, if the rain came, I would be all over Sarson's risk. At twenty to one, uh, I think that's. I think I, I've said before on previous shows. I think this will get in the nineties this year over this this trip um, and beyond. Fourteen furlongs, two miles, and yeah, it's a horse I like very much. And 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 I think Sarson's risk, but it's got to have cut in the ground. It won't handle it if it's good to firm. So I don't want to see it run on good to firm because they might knacker it up. Uh, it's got quite a rounded action. But Sarson's risk for me, if rain, John. This was pretty much beyond me. If I'm honest, I thought, uh, I thought, I thought so, some of these going up in shape a bit as well. I mean, Sir Romy Nicks might, might have a bit of a shout, but um, I, I, I couldn't be confident in this race at all. Right, fair enough, we'll move on. And so, uh, Nicks, two is the four year olds, and uh, was it, Adju- was it a- a- Adjuvant and C King? And I was with Sarson's wrist, but only if they get their in. 225 is the Pretty Polly, and Queen of Fairies uh, leads the race at 100 to 30 with Running Lion, a recent score on the All Weather. Uh, thoughts on this, any of you? I don't think this is a particularly attractive betting medium, but I think it'll be quite instructive with regard to the future. Um, you know, uh, I mean, it's a nice Jabawi filly that John and Slim are running. That would be interesting. Probably, oh, oh, almost certainly an Oaks type, I would have thought, as would be the Rafe and Ralph horse. I think if there was one I was tempted to take on, it'd probably be Floating Spirit of Baldins. I haven't been convinced with that one. Coming off the all weather. Yeah, short enough, I think, at 13 or 2. Yeah, and the, the two that interest me are the, the bottom two. Good stuff. Uh, Nick, anything for you in this? No. no. No, nothing for me either. John made a good comment there. He said it was not a betting medium, but it was something that would instruct him to do something further down the line, like kill himself it, it, after it, watching it. It, 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 was, it was just going to be make sure you let the dog in next time to the <laughs> Indeed. Right. The Dahlia Stakes at three o'clock. Um, will this change uh, the panel's opinion? Uh, again, it's, it's the day of the Phillies. <laughs> We've got uh, the favourite just is with the moonlight for the Sam people with Buick in the saddle. Any views here? No. Yeah, I like, I like <laughs> prosperous as I do. We shrank you up. I think we could, we could be in for a repeat of the, uh, what is it, the Falmouth? If you won last yeah. Year. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think I think we can see a Falmouth type ride from the Saturday, and uh, I'm not that struck on a lot of these, to be honest. Wouldn't be my cup of tea, most of them. I mean, this Rogers Alien thing, I don't know where the hell this is sprung from, on Brighton. It's uh, certainly got, got under my radar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Rogers quietly campaigned it, I think. Yeah, he, he handicaps Al Huzen. Yeah, it definitely progressed nicely. Yeah, but... yeah. But um, I'm I'm not convinced this is this is in uh, Prosperous Voyagers League. No, I mean the, I, I suppose one one that would be major interest would be that Astral Bow, absolutely shattering at Doncaster, but obviously the ground was rotten. But that said, twenty to one is fucking ridiculous for us at one like that, isn't it? It is, but with the ground, I, yeah, I'm, yeah. I, I'm just all over what you said. Pr- prosperous voyage, I'll I'll be back in this um, at seven or two or better. And definitely as well with a view in running, because I think they'll not mess about. They'll no. get on with it. A lot of these will take pulls and be given nice rides. And, and <laughs> while, while we yeah, get on yeah. with it, I'm, well, yeah. and Frankie with the ladies, as we know, is quite good. He usually gets it right. So I'm all over that. Thousand guineas then for to round off the guineas show. To hire is. Do you think? Do you think you had any chance of Thermot pulling this? What the the to hire? 
Yeah. Pulling, it, pulling it as in pulling it out, or pulling yeah. it as pulling in it laying the living <laughs> shit out of it. <laughs> I'll it never know that everything's gone wrong, old friend. I, no, no, no. I, I don't see. I I think this <clears> really. <throat> What what would you th- why would you think he'd pull it, Nick? No, it's just, just if, if the rain didn't arrive. I don't see it. I, he's, 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 he's been muttering on about all week as if it. Oh well, I, I, I want a bit of give in the ground. Yeah. Like, hey, he's the type that will pull it out, isn't he? He's maybe just been giving them a nudge to make sure they put a bit on to keep it damp. But the 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 Tanawa, who's the half sister, the good, the real good one. She won up on firm. She won at Keen- won on Rattle in the, in America, didn't she? She she yeah. won at Keeneland on firm. It's obviously you, if you're going on pedigrees, it's Siuni and Kate yeah. Cross. Well, them two married is a, is a match in heaven for fast ground. And the the thing is, obviously, with her running in Ireland twice, they just run on slop. Yeah, she's running on fucking concrete. This in all fairness. I I always think good, really good fillies and colts always, you know, the, the ground's not really that much of an issue to them. You, you, I, get, you get away, you know, say, you get away with fast ground once, even with a raspberry, don't you? So yeah, um, I, I I I don't. We'll see what happens tomorrow, but I, you might have a point, Nick. Maybe he, he won't want to risk her on very firm ground. I know you're not trainers alike; they tend to wrap them in cotton wool these days. So, but yeah. For me, I just can't have to to hire a beat. But I mean, let's go through some of the contenders. Meditate, obviously, very good filly, but put in a place by Tahira. Can you see her reversing the form, John? Nick? Well, not if Tahira turns up. You know, no. if it's the same Tahira. Well, even at those odds, I mean, you'd have to be a fucking lunatic to back Meditate, wouldn't you, to make that? <laughs> to be fair. <laughs> yeah, you would actually. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I can't believe they're so close to be honest. Nick, I think. I mean, you look at this. A, probably the Irish fillies are, are two apart, aren't they? I mean, they're, 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 a whole bunch have turned up. I mean, we've got really, really big field, but can I see. I can see the, at least these two pulling well clear. If you, had, I mean, if, if I'd have a bet, it would be a Tanira and Midi straight straight four guys might play about twelve to one. Yeah, I can't have the Nell Gwynn winner. I thought I thought that got the right ride. Um, again, lots of cover. And we, we, we just played last last year's preview on loop there, are not we? Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> just cannot have that with it, with any price, uh, any price. Um, Remarkey, uh, that we were all impressed with that, weren't we? At um, at, at Newbury. Yeah. Well, I was impressed to a certain extent. The fact that I had a bet on the runner up sort of tempted me enthusiasm a little bit. <laughs> Yeah, all right. Yeah, but that, that's where I put her for now. Probably just all right. Dreamer Love, uh, I thought <coughs> uh, had a great chance, but would definitely need soft ground for me. I, I, I think that's the key to this this filly. I think she's definitely going to need some cut. Um, she'll get further than 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 a mile. I think uh, I, she did very well in Dubai after missing the break over seven. Would have beaten more five or six lengths than she broke on terms. So Dreamer Love, I think, has got a shout. Written there about her, isn't it? Yeah, I'd be, I'd be worried about her on on sort of good, good to firm. I definitely think she wants juice. Yeah, um, well, is isn't the Casarina and Clyde Cox has got a bit of scope about her, I thought. Well, well beaten in an old win. Um, but it's only the second run. Obviously, it'll be better suited to a mile, probably further. Could be 10 further on Philly, really. Um, if they've all been knocking the fuck out of each other from three and a half out, might run on into a place. Yeah, she's she's one she's one I think will definitely step forward from the yeah. in terms of uh, a development and also the mile, like you said, John. I, I think she's probably ready for ten. Um, you know, the season surprised me as a sayer. Actually, I'm I'm quite liking him. I didn't think I would, but yeah. he's, he's chucking some likable stock. I think. Yes, he is. Um, he, he's doing a lot on percentages. He's doing quite well anyway. I think he's about 17%, as I say. I, um, I, found, I found him making a lot of positive notes about his uh, his offspring, which I didn't expect to be. Really. But, you know. Yeah, OK. Going back to yours then, John, uh, Stanton and Glider. Any, mm-hmm. any, sc- any scope for reversing the form? Yeah, with- should be there about with that one, I think, because I, th- I think the house will take a step forward from... The um, what was it called? The Fred Darling. Yeah. You know? So I, I wouldn't rule it out, but I think the Fred Darling is somewhere behind that Irish race where Tahira absolutely mullered many Yeah, I agree. Uh, Liz, Lizou and Morge. I don't think Morge is good enough. Um, I, 
you know, as as I've already said, dream a love and a thrasher uh, with a with the level break in Javai. I know it was on softer ground than ideal for Morge, but I don't really see Morge winning a Guineas. And Lazoo. Le- <laughs> well, I mean, she made many she didn't she? But she did. I don't know. There was something about that race I couldn't buy into it for some reason. I don't know why. It's probably just prejudice in favour of the Valley Doyle Battalions. Because I, I, I couldn't actually give you a tangible reason why I didn't buy into it. But I'm not convinced this is a mile filly. Um, no. I think we're more likely to in the Commonwealth Cup or something like that. Well, she sh- if it weren't for more hanging, hanging the fuck all over in the in the um, the cherry in them, yeah, she'd probably be unbeaten. Yeah, but I'm with you, John. I, I I cannot see her getting a yard past seven. You know, like she might get seven, but I can't see it. Uh, not a solitary yard beyond seven furlongs. So should, should I, be some red from the side, in, isn't it? Perched out wide in the one box. Well, you're gonna have to get and, cover and six. nursing it for yeah. Seven sermons because he's not going to have to ask her for anything until the spell and out, is he? No, so that's it's a no for me. Any other long shots that we like, Chet? <laughs> not no, I, I think you need a lot of to play to play a long shot here. You need a lot of places. I mean, I think the, the front two are nailed on to be in the frame. Yeah, so you'll think about four or five places at least, wouldn't you? Yeah, so I think I think we're pretty unanimous on that. That that the the market's probably right in the order, and and yeah, we're all, we're all pretty in in Dermot's camp, really. If, I, I, I think actually, if you if you think back to the the day last year when Dermot Sars won that race, if the centre was all on that day, right? It's Guinea's day. You can have five to tell she's turned up. How much you want on? Oh yeah, good we'll point. We we'll get stuck in, wouldn't we? Yeah, definitely. If if I if if to ha- if the same filly in the moid turns, yeah, you know, I mean, uh, we, we so just had this narrative all winter where people oh, German won't run that, it won't be ready. Oh no, he never has them ready there then, you know. Oh, no, not Dermot. Mm. You know, and it's it sort of got ingrained, hasn't it? You know, but so you go back to the, the day of the race. Somebody said he's not fair to tell this on the day yeah. she's there, she's running. Okay, now wallop. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So that's where that's where we are, folks, listeners. Um, any other business to finish, chaps? Have we got any yes, other? Yeah, I've got uh, Saturday. If if I was going to put it up, actually, but the, the trouble is, the I just looked at the Thursk and it's had six millimeters today, and it's got a problem. They haven't had the going stick reading for ages, and the June more and more. I would have put Eileen, uh, sorry, Aileen Do, I think it's pronounced. A fairly good bet. Oh, I would have put it as a two pointer for that race. I think it's it's beaten blue for you off off ninety. It's up off ninety five now. Yeah, I take three off. If it's if it's tomorrow and it hasn't been too bad and it doesn't look too bad, I will still back it uh, at ten to one. Mm. Yeah, an interesting run of that. Wide draws not really a hindrance there either over that trip. Plenty of time to tuck in. That so, will win. Well, will win a good handicap. McClough, mm. but last two or three handicap over a mile and decent ground this year. Good stuff, Nick. So Eileen Dub in the first Conk Cup. John, uh, uh, did you have any, you had anything in Conk Cup? Uh, yeah, yeah. There was two I was interested in actually. Uh, Tuscan and David O'Mara wasn't asked for a great deal of action on seasonal debut. I think that can run well if they don't drop him so far out. Yeah. And uh, also, I'm very interested in the condition of Dark Moon Rising who uh, I'm pretty certain Kevin Ryan thought he had a proper arse on his hands last year, this thing ran in the dandy for God's sake and I think something like this which is a complete change of tack has been running like conditions races small fails, you know, not, not a lot of pace on things like that I think this could reignite this arse and I don't think he's on a bad mark overall no, 85 now. It was 102 <laughs> last season. Yeah, no, I mean, I went out. Oh, interesting. Yeah, this could be could be one at a price, if you agree with John there, on Dark Moon Rising, getting that horse back with first-time cheap pieces. Who knows? Some nice selections there, chaps, for the Thirst Cunt Cup. So that'll do the show. It'll look nice. like Christmas, won't it, with the usual Kevin Ryan nose band on as well. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope he's filling your sack, John. Oh. <laughs> 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 that 
fucking leave it. <laughs> <laughs> right, on that footing, chaps, uh, we're going to draw stumps. I hope you've enjoyed the show and you've had plenty of winners and hopefully we can mark your cards well this weekend so you're all eating crispy beef on Saturday night from the Chinese. That's all from us. Bye for now. <laughs>